Howdy! In this video I'll explain how to start in the post engine without a battery. First a little background, but then I'll explain in detail how to install and connect everything. I've always been kinda lazy to maintain batteries, take care of them, check the charge level and electrolyte level, and once I came across a defective battery, being brand new it started boiling while I was driving on a highway, and the acid flooded this entire part of the frame, after which it successfully began to rust and oxidize. On the one hand it's even good that it was a lead acid battery, because a gel battery would have died immediately or even exploded. This way the question arose of how to start my Dnepr without a battery and operate it successfully. One option is to install a two-wire tractor starter engine magneto just like this one. We don't even consider the magneto from Ural Cross because it's very difficult to find it, and even if you find it, it needs to be installed in the place of the generator, which means that we're left without charging. The tractor magneto needs to be installed in front of the camshaft, after which it sticks out for about 8 miles forward. I've also heard stories of guys who install a magneto like this using two gears. One gear is placed on a camshaft, the other on a magneto. All this is getting connected with a chain, and in the end it all sticks out appendix-like on a rider or left side of the bike. There's also an option with a CDI scooter ignition, but scooter ignition can easily be installed on any single cylinder two-stroke engine, because it must be installed directly on a crankshaft like in a scooter. And for two cylinder two-stroke engines, you need to weld another bus for the whole sensor on the opposite side of the magnet. Unfortunately, with a Dnepr, we don't have the possibility to install a CDI ignition on a crankshaft. And drilling the cam cover, attaching a generator there, making some kind of seal for all this, it's a total yokel action even for me. Theoretically, it's impossible to install a CDI generator and a camshaft, because the camshaft rotates two times slower than the crankshaft, and there simply may not be enough RPMs to excite the high voltage coil. So with a sad face I went to sleep again, but I couldn't fall asleep because I was lying there all night thinking about how to install a CDI ignition on my Dnepr. At the same time I was spurred on by the fact that guys successfully installed CDI ignitions on two stroke engines and happily rode without batteries, and lo and behold, in the middle of the night an epiphany came to me. What if I put the scooter generator in place of the Dnepr generator and send the inductive sensor with the butterfly to the camshaft. The generator rotates faster than a crankshaft, which means that the revolutions will 100% be enough to excite the high voltage coil. In the morning I rode to the store and bought a CDI generator, CDI magnet, two scooter coils, and an AC module. AC module is the one that needs a high voltage coil in a generator, because a DC module that doesn't require a high voltage coil doesn't like to work without a battery. Then a friend of mine gave me a scooter crankshaft, I cut off the magnet taper, went to a turner and he made me a 6mm thread here in order to screw in this magnet taper instead of the fan bolt and a Dnepr armature. Everything should have been bolted like this. Next I wanted to make two tacks so that all this wouldn't fly into my head, and a magnet of the CDI generator should have sat on this taper. In the end I put it all together, and when I spun it over, the magnet had a hellish off-center wobble. All this because the bolt hole has a horrible axial offset. I thought it was just a defective armature. I dug up 5 more Dnepr generators from my stash, and all of them had twisted holes. On one hand it's good that this idea didn't work, because the Dnepr armature itself is quite heavy, plus the scooter magnet, which is also not light, in the end would have made the gear load 2 times bigger. Accordingly, the gear itself would wear out twice as fast, and the noise emitted by the gears would also increase. Initially I wanted to keep the Dnepr generator too. That is, 150 watts of the Dnepr generator and 150 watts of the scooter generator would ultimately produce 300 watts. But then I thought about it and realized that a 150 watt Dnepr generator has been always enough for me. I'm not a fan of a bunch of lights and some kind of CD changer on a motorcycle. So if I throw away the Dnepr rotor and only have a scooter generator left, then it's 150 watts will be enough for me, as 150 Dnepr watts was enough before. Long story short, I went to a turner, he machined the shaft for the scooter generator, which fits in a de-empty Dnepr generator housing. I scooped out all the guts from the Dnepr generator and installed this new rusty shaft in there. Connected everything and began kicking, but there was no spark. I was sweating, kicking, freaking out, but there was still no spark. After half an hour of tortment, I figured I'll move the butterfly closer to the hole sensor. The spark has finally appeared. After pouring some gas in, I kicked it over and the engine started without a battery. To say that I was happy is to say nothing. Then I ran to grab the camera and captured this moment.
Later I packed the wiring, both coils and a module under the ignition cover. And now let's finally move on to the motorcycle, I'll tell you in detail what's going on here. So this is the generator, it's right here on the inside. This is a Honda Dio generator with a built-in high voltage coil. The generator itself sits in this disgusting stainless steel bracket that I made in a few minutes on my stump. This bracket's fastened in three places. First, second, and one more place on the other side. The magnet is also from a Honda Dio, it's bolted onto the machine shaft, which you earlier saw on a photo. The inside of the nipper generator is empty, there's no armature, no brushes, basically it's an empty housing. Of course, I could have left only this part of the nipper generator, remove all this and machine a cover here with a bearing seat, then a shaft wouldn't be so long, it'd be about this long and a magnet would be here. On one hand it would be more compact, but I don't like it, because then all this space would be empty and a big hole would appear here. I don't like this, so I decided to leave the nipper generator housing complete. Another good thing about this is that I wouldn't need to machine an additional cover to seat the bearing, because there are already two bearings in the nipper generator housing. Several wires coming out of the CDI generator. One of them is red and black and goes to the module, the rest go to charging. And with charging I have a little problem, because I can't find a normal voltage regulator, though I constantly buy new ones. I've just bought another regulator, of course a Chinese one, now I need to install it and check it. Now let's move on under the ignition cover, we have a lot of interesting things there too. Here we have two scooter coils, here's one, here's the other. We also have a CDI module, scooter hollow sensor, and a butterfly. The connection pin down here is the same as in a scooter, except that both coils are connected in parallel. There are five wires going to the module. The wire that comes from the high voltage coil in a generator, it's usually red and black. Next, usually this wire is black and yellow and it goes to ignition coils. The third wire comes from the inductive sensor, in my case it's blue and white, they're also often blue and yellow. We also need to run a ground wire to the module. And the last, fifth wire is the engine shutdown or engine stop. I got the engine stop right out here, later I'll install either a button or a toggle switch. The point Point is that when the engine's running, if you short this wire to ground, the engine stalls. There's nothing complicated about connecting this wiring, and I'll repeat that five wires go to the module. One is power supply from the high voltage coil in the generator, the second goes to the coils, the third wire comes from the hole sensor, the fourth wire is the ground, and the fifth wire is the engine stop. To the coils goes the wire from the module, I split it in two so that it goes to both coils. Also the coils are grounded. Basically this is it about the wiring. I'll explain in simple terms what's going on in here. When we spin the engine, the magnet rotates around around the generator, the high voltage coil excites and gives a pulse to the module. Also at this moment a signal comes from the whole sensor to the module about when it should spark. Then all this stuff goes to the coils and we got a spark on the spark plugs. I didn't want to install a dnipper coil because I was afraid that the module might not withstand it and burn. Therefore I connected two scooter coils in parallel. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section. That's all I got for today, thanks for watching, till the next video.